How to score 11 billion views on Facebook. Literally, how do you do it? And here's the burner as a science influencer. I only thought you can get those numbers if your last name is Kardashian. But this young man proves us wrong. Please welcome Hashim Al Gaila. Come on, let's give him some energy, guys. That's good. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here today. Um, it's definitely one of the best and the biggest events I have attended. Speaking of the biggest, my name is Hashim Al Gaili, and I run one of the biggest Facebook pages in the world. It is called Science Nature Page, and it was founded in 2015. The page right now has over 32 million followers. And every week it reaches around 200 to 400 million Facebook users. And every day between 10 to um, 100,000 people join the page. The topics that I cover on my Facebook page are very different. They, they range from science to nature, medicine, and technology. If you take a look at the page, it's number four globally in terms of views, in terms of engagement, and all coming from videos. If you take a look in Germany, it's also number four. And um, yeah, I guess it's a matter of time before it uh, surpasses Bayern Munich, I guess. Let's give it six months, I guess, <laughs> from now. So, what do I do? Well, I am a science communicator. What I do, basically, is that I take complex scientific information and I turn them into something simple. And then I communicate that simple information to the general public. Now, when researchers and scientists publish their publications, they are extremely complex. I mean, even scientists themselves require other scientists so they can understand them and then break them down. You don't expect anybody from the general public to go and read a scientific publication. And that's where I come to break them down, make them simple, and communicate them to the general public. And the way I do that is through articles, by writing articles, by creating infographics. As you can see, these are infographics, and they are beautifully designed. They are very colorful. So instead of reading a big article with complex scientific information, you can just look at these infographics. They are more engaging, and they give you the basic idea. Besides articles and infographics, I also use videos as a medium to communicate science. Videos are very important. It's essential whether you are in business or an influencer, you have to focus on videos. Because by 2021, most of the traffic on the internet, that's 80%, will come from videos. So if you don't focus on videos from now, then you are not going to be big in the game later on. This is very much like Nokia. When smartphones were introduced, Nokia didn't bother. And now we can all see that Nokia is not big in the smartphone business. So it's very important to take care of videos from now. As of now, my videos on social media have garnered over 8 billion views. So the question is, what does it really take to get 8 billion views? Well, if you follow these basic rules, you too can get even more than 8 billion views. The first thing you have to take care of is the content quality. So many things are online, 
but only the quality content stands out. Things that are related to people, things that they really want to share and see. So you have to take care of the content quality. Second, you have to simplify the language. Whether it's business or fashion or anything, it's easy to get lost in complicated words. So if you want to reach more people, you have to make sure that the language you are using is really simple. Because that's how people of different ages will be able to enjoy your video. You also have to take care of the visual presentation. If you take a look into the era of the silent movies, so many people loved silent movies, and so many people still do. Why? Because silent movies, even though there was not much talking, they managed to deliver ideas. This is very much like reading a comic book. You're looking at a sequence of pictures, and you're getting the abstract idea. On my Facebook page, there are people from different countries, those who don't even understand English, but still, they share videos because they get the abstract information from the power of visual storytelling. So when you are creating a video, visual storytelling should be one of your top priorities. Then you have to take care of the background music. Sometimes we watch videos in which the music is somewhere else and the content is somewhere else. They're not really synced together. I mean, you can't use a happy music if it's a funeral scene right? It doesn't make sense. So the music that you are using must match the context and the content of the video that you are creating. Then you have to take care of the length. How long is your video? Because this is very important. I think we have all seen on social media, there are videos that are short. Some of them use text, music, and basically visuals, footage. And you have seen some videos in which the text moves from one side of the screen to the other side. And these are called showcasing videos. If you are creating a showcasing video, then the ideal length is one minute, one minute and a half. But if you are creating a narrated video, then the ideal length is up to four minutes. So sometimes you see that National Geographic, History Channel, Discovery Channel, Science Channel, they produce amazing documentaries that can go up to 50 minutes to one hour long. And some of these documentaries end up being uploaded on YouTube, but they don't get a lot of views. Why? Because they are extremely long. They don't deliver enough information within a short time frame. So you have to take care of the length of the video. This is one of the videos that got over 2 million shares. By the way, the screenshot is not updated, but right now it's over 2 million shares. The video might contain some graphic material, so you can close your eyes. Um, this video does not have any narration or text or anything. It's just 50 seconds long. But what made it powerful is the visual storytelling. I mean, why two million people decided to share this video is because it's short, it contains a visual story, and it tells them something important that relates to them. So let's watch it together. And as I said, viewer discretion is advised. That's it. All of that. This is C-section. C-section. We all heard about C-section, but seeing it is quite, I mean, something else. 
And that's why two million people decided to share the video. But um, let's watch an example of narrated video. And I think we need the sound with this one because it's narrated. So if we can have a loud volume. Yes. After you die, your brain continues to work for more than 10 minutes. Our current understanding of death is very simple. We consider people dead the moment their hearts stop working. The respiratory and circulatory systems are no longer functioning. The body has shut down and life ceases to be. But there's more to it than that. Despite having a functionally dead heart, your brain will continue to work. In fact, it might be the last part of your body to die. Moments before death, your brain receives a surge of electricity. No one knows why it happens. It also begins to lose oxygen. Even after your breathing and heartbeat stop, you are still conscious for about 2 to 20 seconds. This is because the cerebral cortex can last without oxygen. This part of the brain is responsible for thinking and decision making. It is also responsible for converting the information gathered by our senses into actions. Despite this activity in the cerebral cortex, you lose all reflexive and muscular ability before death. At this moment, the brain is experiencing its last minutes. Brain cells are activating chemical pathways that would lead to their ultimate death. A pump of oxygen is what stands between you and your final moment. If someone manages to restart your heart through CPR or life support, your brain will receive enough oxygen to wake up again. If there is no oxygen, your brain begins to surrender. Most of your brain is now dead, but there's one final place that doesn't give up so easily. This is the memory center which stores the most emotional memories you've ever experienced. This region in your brain is not susceptible to blood loss, even during serious injuries, and it's the last part of your brain to shut down. Before shutting down, the memory center flashes moments from your life right before your eyes. When doctors turned off life support for terminal patients declared clinically dead, the brain appeared to be active for more than 10 minutes. And when they scanned electroencephalographic EEG recordings in these individuals, they found striking differences between each one of them. This probably means that every one of us will go through a unique experience when we die. Two days after death, more than 1,000 genes are still working in the body. Some of these genes are highly active, and they have very important functions. Stimulating inflammation, firing up the immune system, and counteracting stress. But some of these genes are only switched on during embryonic development. Is it possible that the body is trying to save itself from imminent death by reverting to a cellular stage? Some of these, however, promote cancer growth. Why would the body initiate cancer growth even two days after death? What is the purpose of promoting cancer in a dead body? Mysterious indeed. It is possible that our understanding of death is false. Is it ethical to pronounce people dead when some parts of their body are still working? And what does this mean for those whose organs are donated immediately after death? Should we be more careful when conducting autopsies on dead bodies? Only time and more research will reveal this to us. So as you can see, in just span of four minutes, you can tell a lot of information. If this was a documentary, they would stretch it to one hour. And that's why people lose interest in the video before the documentary ends. How many of you found the video interesting? Please raise your hands. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. 
Okay, so if you have seen, I also took care of the sound effect. You have to add sound effects to your videos because this enhances the experience. Never publish videos. If you, if you really want them to this quality, you have to add the sound effects. Now I'm moving to a new type of content, science fiction. How many of you love science fiction? Please raise your hand. Uh, good, good crowd. <laughs> so I created my own science fiction, sci-fi film. I wrote it and directed it. I assembled a crew, actors and everybody basically in the film industry, and I created my film. So this is a new way for me, it's a new challenge, so that I try to deliver science through an entertaining manner, to put scientific hypotheses and create a story, make them part of the story, and that's how you make people interested in science. And now we're going to watch the trailer of the film. And we need a uh, loud uh, volume for this, please. Our universe is part of a simulation. We're all part of the simulation, regardless of our time and space. It's all predetermined, all pre-calculated. By who, we, we don't know. Why do these visions keep coming to me? I feel trapped in the same place. I couldn't believe it myself either, the first time. Unlike anything humanity has ever seen. It's a message from somewhere else. I believe it could be a warning or an invitation. So, yeah, the film will be ready in two months. It was shot in Berlin, and also the visual effects were done in Berlin. This is different than regular uh, videos, because regular videos, I just buy stock footage, and I just put together. But this one required shooting and hiring a team for visual effects. There are so many ways to tell stories through videos, and there are so many people who are interested in watching different types of videos. So find your target audience and start making videos for them, and you too will make over 10 billion views. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The movie looks amazing. Thank you. <laughs>